EA's yearly sports releases are consistently some of the best-selling games of the year. So it may come as a surprise that EA are actually thinking about scrapping them. Which raises the question, what the hell are they going to do instead? EA want to go all in on games as a service when it comes to its two biggest sports franchises, FIFA and Madden. We've talked about games as a service before and how a lot of developers are turning to this model as a more profitable way to make games. GTA Online, Rainbow Six Siege and Call of Duty are just a few examples of games games as a service that have proved incredibly popular. We did a video on it specifically about EA last week actually and how they see the future of gaming and of course that future is microtransactions, season passes, DLC, basically anything that keeps players spending money after they initially buy a game. But what have they got planned for FIFA and Madden? Well, speaking to Bloomberg, EA chief Andrew Wilson said the company is actually considering the possibility of ditching the annual releases and turning FIFA and Madden into subscription services. Services. Quote, there's a world where it gets easier and easier to move that code around, where we may not have to do an annual release. We can really think about those games as a 365 day live service. So instead of buying the game every year, players would either pay a regular fee or an update fee to keep on playing. With the huge shift towards digital sales, it makes a lot of sense to change how EA offers its games, but this would be a pretty huge change for gaming in general. Rather than waiting for the next yearly release to try out new game modes and players, the subscription model will see regular updates to the game. But think about what that might mean. Multiple boxed physical games that guarantee huge sales for retailers every single year disappearing from store shelves. Andrew Wilson told Bloomberg that EA would treat this kind of model as a 365 day live service. Live service. So might players need a constant internet connection to access these games? I mean, already what he's saying is raising questions. Wilson said, quote, the greatest disruptor of the consumption of entertainment media in the last five years has been the combination of streaming plus subscription. It's changed the way we watch television, it's changed the way we listen to music, it's changed the way I read books. So is he right? Is this the future of gaming? Now before we get into this we just need to read a, another little quote that Andrew Wilson said, just see if you can help us out to figure out exactly what he's on about here. There's a world not too far away from now where video games move from being a discreet conscious experience to an indiscreet subconscious experience experience. That's some uh, visionary talk right there. What are you on about? He's on a different plane, man. He is, he's, yeah. he's way above our heads. Yeah, that's for I sure. feel like a moron because I haven't got a clue what he's talking about. <laughs> I, uh, to me, it's like the Matrix or something. Like, are we just subconsciously? I mean, we just can't figure out that we're playing games. Is that what he's on about? That we, that we're just <laughs> subconsciously, in subconsciously. Yeah, and and buying loot boxes without knowing that we're doing it. I mean, what's he? That's probably what he wants, though, isn't it? That's probably probably what wants, exactly yeah. what he wants. This is a huge change for me. This is really significant. I can't help but think what it'll do to retail. I mean, as soon as one thing happens like this, that's you know when balls start rolling. We've just a video on COD selling really well. That's an annual franchise comes out every single year. What happens to that? Will that become a subscription model? Then all those box sales disappear and then all the retailers, even all the like online retailers and stores that need to send us those copies of box games, that's their business model. What happens to all them? This could be a massive shift if he follows through with what he's talking about here. From the outset for me, it seems like when you consider the subscription model, might be a good thing for the players, right? I think mm. instead of paying $50 or £45, whatever, for the new iteration of a game year on year. You just play like a subscription service that might amount to less than that and you, you get content throughout the year, not just once a year. It seems like that might be a good idea for the player, but I'm very skeptical when it comes to EA. I think the only reason that they might be doing this is because they believe that they might get more money out of people. So, <laughs> do, you want, do you want to get that mic? Do you want to? Probably Andrew Wilson calling you up. Just letting you Quit know. Quit bad mouth for me, Mike. I can hear what you're saying. <laughs> Yeah, flight he's like, like I said, he's on a different plane. He's, Sorry, fucking, he's exactly. He's right there in your pocket. Where was I? <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to them coming up with new strategies for delivering games to you, I can't help but think this is this is all a clever scheme to get more money out of you uh, more often. What he's talking about here is maybe doing away with the annual releases so that they don't make that shitloads of money because they make shitloads of money every single year, year on year. Must be thinking about making more money with this new scheme. Why would you change already winning, winning formula unless it's going to get you better results? Get I'm very sceptical. No, I agree. I mean, it, for me, it's like a corner cutting thing and how can they like reduce costs? They'll still reach the same amount of players, but how can they make that cost less for them? Because those players will buy it anyway. A subscription model going, you don't have the pressure of having to improve and come up with new features every year or whatever, it doesn't matter, you just 
and keep it up to date and keep rosters and drop features whenever features are ready to be developed. It takes away that annual kind of pressure to come up with a new game that will get reviewed by yeah. IGN and all that shit. And not only that, you don't have the production and the marketing and everything. You don't have to actually manufacture the game and the discs and, and then come up with all the billboards and advertising campaigns for it constantly. You know, people are on Netflix and they stay on Netflix. They stay subscribed to it. They don't have to continuously advertise how amazing Netflix is to those people. People who buy FIFA every year, they keep having to be reminded FIFA's coming out, FIFA's coming out, FIFA's coming out, and that costs EA a lot of money. So they can cut all these things down, therefore making more money with the people who want to play FIFA. I think it makes perfect sense for the Andrew Wilsons of this world to move to this kind of thing. And it makes no surprise that they're doing it with sport. EA do this with their sports franchises. They test things out. They were doing FIFA Ultimate Team and stuff quite, you know, quite a while ago now, and, and that kind of thing is crossed over into the other other game. So this could be the first of a very new type of gaming for us. This could be really big news. So is he right? Is this the future of gaming? Do you see yourself paying a subscription for FIFA every month? Let us know down in the comments below. Like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new around here. There's another video for you to watch there. Support us on Patreon if you're awesome. We'll see you again in the next one. Bye for now.